we had a little bit of a chat before the pod got uh, kicked off, and and Jen was. You know, really interestingly telling us about her pre-season training program. Uh, I don't know if you want to share anything it's about intense. that. It's a little bit different to what we would expect from the Arsenal pre-season start. Yeah, well, obviously I'm on my off-season at the minute, but I don't know, I'm not good at sitting still or like to keep ticking over and my partner's on a bit of a fitness hype at the minute, so she loves a bit of boxing and gym, so I'm knackered from boxing, to be <laughs> honest. Like, but it's, it's been great. Um she loves it and it's just something to take take us over on the like on the on the break and, and keep fit and so yeah. Probably come back fitter, hopefully. Come, right. the, come the next season. No but, yeah, real it's off been good. season for you then. Yeah, I mean I I had a few days off and stuff, but I just I'm not good at sitting still. I like it. It makes me feel good mentally as well. Like so it's good. good. Look out then, Emily. When when you come back in the new season, won't just be Katie McCabe up for a physical. It'll It'll be expect you. from Jan as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. But yeah. we don't expect to transition from football into boxing anytime no, soon. No, no chance. It's, it's harder. Yeah. It's harder. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, uh, it's not enjoyable. Like, <laughs> okay. All right. So you've been once. <laughs> you showed her effort. You're like, yeah, I'm going to, you know, let's do some hobbies together. But cool, I'm fine now. Peace out. It's yeah. my time off. All Something right. else next. Let's do like you know, biking or something next. Yeah. Or like hobby craft or like chess. <laughs> All right, sweet. Pop anyway. Time. Let's talk about football. We have chatted absolute waffle in the lead up to this. You wouldn't even want to know what we have covered. Um, right, we're going to dive straight in. It's the Champions League final just taking place. Barcelona walking away with another title, their second title, beating Wolfsburg 3-2. What a game it was. I think, you know, first half we were thinking Barcelona had the best chances, weren't converting them. We thought, is this going to happen for them? And then Wolfsburg... Three minutes in, score a goal, and then right towards the end of the second half, another goal, and we're thinking, whoa, Barcelona, where are you? What's taking place? I mean, Jen, you watched the game. What, what did you think of it? Were you scared for Barca after that first half? Not really. No. I don't think you can ever <laughs> really... Of course, like, Wolfsburg took their chances, and you know, like you can never write off Pop in the box or Pierre when she gets on the ball in those kind of positions, but... I think everyone would have probably been saying Barca aren't, aren't out of second gear at the minute and as soon as they stepped up like that that shows the quality that they've got that no matter what position you know, the weird thing about Barca they're not in that position many times so mm-hmm. you never really know like how they're going to react to it but they've got the quality times 100 and they came back in the second half absolutely flying like two goals straight away after the break and you can never write them off the quality they've, they've got in that team and yeah I think they maybe just didn't expect Wolfsburg to come out the way that they did and had to pick themselves up in the second half. But what a second half performance. I thought they were unbelievable. And what kind of things do you think were being discussed in that change room at, at half time? I mean, you've been in situations, obviously, yourself, where you know, you've know you gone in after not a great half. You've got a lot of work to do in the second half. What kind of things are the team talking about and saying to each other? And, and what's the managers? What is the manager saying to kind of mm. like get that get that fifth gear out of them? I think two things. I think, one, it's a final. What what have you got to lose? Mm-hmm. You have to go out and just give it absolutely everything. There's no sort of like game management in in those in those moments. It's right, we're two 0 down. It's a cup final. Throw everything at them. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of that just winning mentality that you have to throw out in a second half performance. You've got forty five minutes to take it to either extra time or all the way. Um, and then second, but probably most important one, they were nowhere near at the level that they know they could have been, and they hadn't started playing at the level that they, they know that they can show. So one was performance and second was mentality for me. I think those are the two things that they know they're good enough to go and win the game mm-hmm. and they did it and they came out absolutely flying in the second half. I think the early goal was probably key for them in the second half as yeah. well because um, it was a bit of a, you know, 48 minutes and 50 minutes, it was a bit of a one-two punch talking about boxing. It felt like they <laughs> nice. they good quickly reference. got Wolfsburg on the ropes and they, they barely a chance to get a breath in the second half because in the first half, it felt like they weren't getting the players like Carlin and Graham, H- Graham Hansen into it that much. Mm. And that completely changed in the second half. It was like, it just felt like an entirely different second half. And once they got those goals, they were so much freer that, that were the kind of team we're used to seeing from Barcelona, which must be terrifying if you're Wolfsburg and you think you've got the upper hand. <laughs> <laughs> and then they come out like that. Um, and yeah, the third goal was just carnage. And it was a sloppy mess. Yeah, that was yeah. carnage. It's, it's, like, it's always. Because the first two goals were brilliant, you know, mm. like good timing, runs into the box, brilliant. Um, but the third, to, to lose it on that is just a bit of chaos in the box, but that's football. Goals can come from any sort of situation in the game. I mean, how do you recover from a game like that? I don't want to dwell too much. Um, obviously, you were part of the side back in uh, 2021 when Barcelona beat 
Arsenal 4-0. Uh, obviously, they're up at 3-0 at half time. I mean, how do you recover from a game like that where you feel like you you know, you know, should have done more, or you could have done better, or there are certain things that didn't go to plan? How, do, how What's the kind of mentality shift after that? I think, the, you know, the, the big part of that was, you know, Barcelona were coming into their absolute prime at that point, and they were at points in a game un, unplayable. Mm. You know, the, the level that they showed and the quality that they showed, it was like they had overloads everywhere. And that's like years of training they've built into that philosophy and process and I feel like when you've got kids at the academy that are coming into the first team and they've been training that philosophy for years it was it was more just like a level of respect that you had to have for them because you came off the pitch thinking I don't actually know what we could have done mm -hmm. more there because they were just that good <laughs> and it was that just level of respect that we had for them and of course we we could have maybe done certain things differently press them higher up the pitch but if you press a team like Barca higher up the pitch you and you get popped you, you're sitting on the edge of your box mm -hmm. two minutes later you know so it's it's a difficult one but I think after those games I mean I remember sitting in the changing room just thinking they popped us you know mm -hmm. they they absolutely outplayed us and you just had to have that level of respect for them that you know they've been training that philosophy since they were kids mm -hmm. and they're flying I mean they yeah they're beasts aren't they I mean you could have been facing them that's the weird. I mean, I, I saw that game. We were both there at the uh, the Emirates Stadium not not so long ago. Uh, obviously, seeing uh, you guys take on on Wolfsburg and the whole crowd was behind. We thought this is it. They're going through to the final. This is killer. And then obviously, what a night that was. It was a night of emotions. Um, and Lotto, who'd had such an amazing, incredible day, I, I felt so sorry for her because it just mm. it was one of those. It was a small lapse, like you all have them. I mean, I'm obviously been in goal. The amount of lapses and poor judgment things that I've done in in ridiculous moments. But yeah. how, how was the squad? after that game like how did you all sort of get behind her and things I saw a lot of people going over to her and sort of you know just giving her a hug and saying mate you had an incredible one like these things just happen like oh yeah and like the, the thing is with lots like she's got such an uh, incredible mentality that <laughs> she she knows her mistakes but she moves forward pretty quickly from them she's yeah. very much like a high performance mentality that like short-term memory you know she, she was gutted she was annoyed devastated that that's the way that a mistake happened but in, in a game like that but she'll forget about it just as quickly and move on to the next and and know she's you know games aren't defined by little moments like that or your season or or anything or mm. um respect as a player so yeah it was, it was it was a bizarre day in the best and you know heartbreaking way all in one the, the game genuinely had every emotions i think for not just the players on the pitch, but for the injured players and then getting back into the game and losing it last minute and even Laura Van Reuter tearing her ACL in that game and just kind of, it was like we were just throwing punches absolutely everywhere. There's so many boxing chats. Yeah, I, know. I love, I love it so much. It's subconsciously in there, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, but like in all honesty, even to go out in the way that we did, the the, the sense of pride throughout the whole day was just unreal. Like a, I will always feel forever grateful to be on the pitch and having played it and especially being older and having seen the game grow and to be a part of games like that and seeing it being sold out and it was just amazing and I, I obviously felt good for the girls who, who couldn't play and that done all the graft all year to, to not get moments like that especially Kim Little like we've, we've grown up together and was chatting recently about it to her and how gutted she was to miss out in it and it is players like that you want to experience those moments because they do the graft all year and then mm -hmm. miss out in in those big games but yeah it was it was unreal but I think it was the sense of pride that we all had and just having each other's backs like it's just such a good group it was it was definitely a standout moment of the season for me um <clears throat> and yeah despite Arsenal losing it didn't have the same I mean obviously it was gutting for you guys but because of all the everything else had gone on around it um, how close you'd come despite all the injuries mm -hmm. it still felt like such a positive night yeah. um, and you could even see that on the pitch like the way all the girls the injured girls sitting behind the, the dugouts like everything you know when uh, Laura went off like Viv was down to meet the stretcher yeah. like that camaraderie was really on display um, and even like you know you coming on and going up front like everyone's doing so many different jobs that maybe they wouldn't be used to doing. And I think that was a really good like display of that on the pitch that night, despite the, the end result. Yeah, I, I've, I've genuinely never experienced anything like it, like in terms of people that we've got and roles and responsibilities and how much that's chopped and changed throughout the season based on who's on the pitch, who's injured, who's in and out, you know, all those kind of tricky things that you, we, we, we've had to adapt to so many different situations. But and I think in most teams that can you know you can 
you can lose a sense of belief or you can lose a sense of what our focus is on of what we're trying to do so I, it's just whoever was on the pitch at whatever time everyone had each other's backs everyone knew what the job was to do everyone was helping in whatever capacity you summed it up perfectly there with Viv seeing the stretcher coming off like there's so many different people that have been in that situation whether you're on the stretcher or you're the one care but it's like that one thing that we all have for each other is care for each other respect for each other we have each other's backs and I think that genuinely is really rare in like performance sport and do you think obviously I mean this season's been particularly tough for Arsenal the spate of injuries has been you know mm. it, it's just unprecedented really for a squad to have that many sort of high profile star players go out with with such a serious injury at, at sort of the same time you know obviously like we just had Leo and then obviously Laura in the in the Champions League semi-final um do you think that kind of the adversity that you guys have been through kind of helps sort of make the squad more cohesive like it makes you kind of like you come through that together now you've, you've secured your Champions League spot you, you did the absolute best you could in the in the title race do you think those kind of challenges sort of help bring the team together more I think so yeah. yeah I mean you never want that to be the case but I think everyone's gone through stuff whether it's like off the pitch you know personal stuff or or on the pitch as well and I think it's again like I, I said it before we've all got that kind of level of care for each other everyone we're all just people you mm. know okay we're people first but I'm, I'm footballer second and I think that's probably the most important thing that it's more everyone's well-being everyone's checking in see each other's all right because if you check in with that first the football will come come just a little bit easier I think um but yeah of course like you you never want to see anyone go through big injuries like or or small ones either so but I think we we all understand it's it's part of football and it's mm. it's part and parcel of it and that's you know just that it's it's normal but to have it to that extent the season was pretty different um and especially at the, at the business end at the crunch end where you're you're trying to chase big games and it was really really weird for for me coming in at that point it was like right everyone's done all the graft and no all of a sudden yeah, we've got the so it was it was bizarre in that sense, but just to have everyone's backing was just gave me the confidence to be like, right, okay, we can we can go and do it, and everyone kind of stepped up at, at the right time. 